Hey guys, Thing Fishy here. So make your character, choose the Confessor starting class, and grab a golden seed as the starting item. Welcome to build guide number 12. And since the last few guides have been pretty complicated with loads of spells, incantations, and items to grab, for this one, I wanted to go back to the oldest of soul strats and run around half naked, bonking everything with a big old bonky stick. This is quite a simple run, as we're pretty much set up for the whole game by the time we get to market. And this gave me an opportunity to try out one of the most powerful Ashes of War in the game, Cragblade. If you want a strength build that can absolutely bully pretty much every boss, this is one of the very best options. Also, don't be put off by the fact that I'm once again not wearing any armour. I'm going to be levelling up endurance for this run for a light equip load, so if you follow my levels, you can go for a medium load with decent armour if you prefer. So let's talk setup. As usual, I followed my standard setup route, linked to the full video and play along guide in the description. And unfortunately, as this is a smithing stone run, you're going to have to do all of it. While you're in Limgrave and on the way to Fort Hyatt, take a slight detour to the Minor Ur Tree for the Spike Crack tier, then head southwest to the Mistwood Ruins and down into the cellar for the Axe Talisman. So we pick up the action here, at Fort Gale in Caled. Now if you're wondering why we started as Confessor on a pure strength build, this is the reason why. Confessor needs a single extra point in faith to use the Flame Grant Me Strength incantation. This will give you more damage in the early game than the extra strength of the Barbarian class. So I always start as Confessor on a pure strength build. While you're here, head up to the top for a super sketchy one-way trip to get the Star Scourge heirloom for later. Now we're going to head to Altus Plateau and towards the Great Bridge. Use the teleporter to get to the other side and light the grace under the bridge. Head to the convoy nearby and hit one of the giants to stop it. Then open the chest in the back to grab the... <laughs> Head back to it, jump on the back, and grab the spiky bonk. Now Great Stars is a very interesting weapon because of its two unique features. First up, it's a bleed weapon. But before you get too excited about that, we're not going to be seeing too many bleed procs from it. Due to the damage this weapon puts out, we're only going to see about one per fight for the majority of the game. So think of it as a nice bit of bonus damage rather than something that we're going to rely on. It also passively heals 1% of your health for each hit you land. But this is almost completely useless on a weapon that is this big and hits this hard. Despite these passive effects not being game changers, it's still the best great hammer for this build I'd say. Speaking of game changers though, Light the grace by the Red Main Castle Bridge and head over to this grave site to bonk the Little Scarab for Cragblade. Cragblade does two things, it boosts our damage, but more importantly it boosts our posture damage. Head to Lena's Rise in Kaelid and make it night. Jump onto the side of the bridge to bait the Knight's Cavalry into yeeting himself off. Now head to Fort Farath and kill Grail with the Morning Star and Bleed Grease, popping a pickled foulfoot just as she dies. You can now warp to EG and level up the Spiky Bonk to plus 16. Run back to the round table to buy a dagger and then level up. Okay, time for Margit. At the grace before him, level up your flasks, equip the spike crack tier and strength tier to your physic, memorize flame grant me strength, equip crag blade to the great stars, and golden vow to your dagger. Before you go in, cast golden vow, flame grant me strength, and use crag blade for the buff. This will be our setup for the entire run. 
Now I don't want to turn this video into a festival of science and maths. So I'm going to put all of the nerdy stats about Cragblade's poise damage with this weapon in the description. If you want to know everything there is to know about poise damage, check out Illusory Wall's ridiculously comprehensive research on it. What you need to know for this build is that we are doing absolutely ridiculous poise damage. We can stagger Margit here with a charged R2 and an R1 rather than the usually required second charged attack. But for now, I'm keeping it to R2s to take advantage of the Axe Talisman and the Crack Tear. And that's a three hit Margit fight. When he's dead, Equip Radagon saw. Oh, I didn't have the Axe Talisman equipped. So that was actually harder than it needed to be. Level up at the Grace and head through Stormvale. I didn't get hit running through here last time, so I'm feeling quite good about this. Light the secluded cell grace and head into Godric. Now phase 1 is going to be fine, but phase 2 could be an issue. Wait for him to do his tornado attack and wind up a charged R2 right under him. Get another in and take the repost. Hit him with two more charges, then a single R1. Now head to Rayo Lucaria for Red Wolf. Face tank at least one of his hits in the name of tradition, then hit him with two charged R2s. Go bonk Moongrim on the head for an extra level. And then on to Renala. Now we can one cycle her phase one, but as always, I like to take her down to one hit the first time, so I have time to do all of my bits and bobs before phase two. Run straight up to her at the beginning of phase two, hit her with a chargey, and follow up with one in case you get lucky and she doesn't dodge back. If she does, one jumping attack for the stagger, and then take the repost. Now head to Redmain Castle, and I know what you're thinking. Yes, I usually fight Radan on these guides after Morgoth, Rikard, or both. But I'm fighting him now because Radan has the highest amount of poise in the whole game, and I want to stagger him. Use the same strategy as always, and get stuck in through all of the scripted attacks. It's quite hard to stagger Radan as he has hyper armor through a lot of these animations. But with this ridiculous poise damage, it only took me a couple of attempts to get it. The reason that I did this fight so soon is because if I did it with much more damage, he'd be dead before his posture broke. Since we've done early Radan, we can get some easy levels. Head back to the fourth church in Weeping Peninsula and out to the walking mausoleum. Clean its feet and head in to duplicate Radan's remembrance. Pop both and level up. Now to Volcano Manor. There's nothing really we need to get for the time being, so you can run straight through to Noble. And this fight is a great showcase of Cragblade's utility in staggering with an R2 and R1. I find getting two charged R2s can be a little sketchy on this guy. But here, all you need to do is one followed by a dodge and an R1. The rolling R1 on great stars is very fast, so it's great for this. Head back to Storm Hill Shack and grab a stone sword key from this scaffolding behind the grace. Then head through Volcano Manor to the stone sword key gate and through it. 
drop down and grab the dagger talisman for later. Now straight to Rykard. As usual, equip the lance in one hand, serpent hunter in the other, and spam crouching L1s through both phases to skip those crazy phase 2 attacks. Now to Altus and to the Draconic Tree Sentinel. And here we're just going to spam charged R2s for a constant stun. Okay, so I spent a little bit of time messing around with this and couldn't find a way of doing a complete stun lock with our current stamina. However, I came up with the next best thing. Run up to him and hit him with a running R2, then into the two charged R2s, followed by another for the stagger. One more while he's stunned, then regain your stamina and hit him with another during his transition. Dodge the first attack in phase two for another charged attack, then the fight's over. Run through Lindell to the West Avenue Balcony Grace. Go back and bully the Erdtree Avatar. Pop the Lord's Rune for some extra levels. Up the Dragon's Wing to the next Grace, then take a little detour up to the Colosseum for the Ritual Shield Talisman. Now it's time for Godfrey, and this fight is a great showcase for how powerful our R1s are for posture damage. Get a charged R2 in at the start if you can, and then from there just go for rolling R1s. Three will break his stance. Take the riposte, another charge as he recovers, and then one more hit will end the fight. Now you have a choice here with our fourth talisman slot. As our vigor is low, the sensible approach is to go with the ritual shield talisman to win much tankier. Alternatively, you can be silly like me and go for the dagger talisman instead to boost our repost damage. Okay, time for more gold. Now, instead of grinding for the perfect fight here, which would have been relatively easy, I thought I'd show you what happens when Morgoth does everything that you don't want him to do when you're going for a stagger strategy. Obviously you want to get into it as soon as possible, because of Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow. But even if he wants to dance around for a while and waste all of your buffs, because of Cragblade's recent buff to lasting 60 seconds, you can just be very patient and wait for him to give you a chance to get that charged R2 in. After this, hit him with an R1. And from this point on, the fight is already over. Repost, two charged attacks. Repost, one charged attack. Now head up to the rolled lift and all the way to the Zamor ruins. Run through the ruins and into this basement for the Smithing Stone Bell 3. Now across the bridge and up to the freezing lake grace. Drop down and wake up Sleeping Beauty and bait him into hitting this statue for some smithing stone cells. Then around the lake to the first church of America and up the rocks next to it for more. You can now head back to the round table, buy smithing stones with more God's remembrance and level the spiky bonk to plus 20. Now head down into Nokron and all the way to the Gargoyles. I have nothing to say about this one.
Head into deep root depths and kill this avatar to round up your levels. Then head back to the mountain tops. Light the grace by fire giant and double back for the ancient dragon stone in the big skull on the cliff. Now for fire giant. Phase 1 is very similar to every other build, but you will get more staggers to take advantage of. Rebuff Cragblade at the start of phase 2 and double tap that hand with two chargies for another chargey and a repost on the eye. Now riding around bonking his feet with Torrent is probably the safer approach and relatively easy with a bleed weapon, but since me and this guy haven't been getting along recently, I decided to fight him straight up to get it done as quickly and safely as possible. Fighting him this way and going for the arms is definitely riskier if you don't know the moveset too well, but there's also far less risk of you suddenly getting rolled on out of nowhere, so decide which one is best for the health of your controller. Speak to Melina and burn the Earth Tree. As usual, we run through for Armazula all the way to the Transept Grace, before heading back to Carle at the Church of Ella for three crack pots and the crafting kit, back to the Saints Bridge Merchant in Limgrave for another, back to the secluded cell to grab two more pots by the pot boys, then back to the ball prawn shack and south into the village of the Albanurix for any extra mushrooms and St. Trina's lilies you need and the first half of the secret medallion. Head back to Faram, craft your sleep pots and head in to put the sticky bandits to sleep. Now skinny is fine as always, but fatty will be up after the first repost, but get a chargey in while he's rising and a jump attack for a second stagger and you'll be fine. Run through the rest of Farum in the usual way, chucking a sleep pot on the floor instead of healing because even after 12 back to back guides you still haven't learnt to unequip them. The Draconic here is the same strategy as the other one, he's a little tankier so you'll need to dodge a couple of extra attacks. Now we need some extra runes to level up our weapon, so jump back to the Bellum Highway in North Leonia and use the Spirit Spring to jump into the Walking Mausoleum. I'm still not sure if this is the intended method for getting up here, but I know the comment section will have my back if it's not. Do some dusting up there and head in to duplicate Rykard's Remembrance. Pop this and head back to the Round Table to buy all the remaining smithing stones to level your weapon up to max. Now for Beast Clergyman. Now there is one thing that we need to do here and one thing alone. Do not kill Beast with a Riposte. If you kill Beast with a Riposte, you won't get repositioned for Malakef, and we want to. So either play very patiently and don't take a Riposte if you think it might kill him, or you can take the reckless approach like me and force an early stagger and kill him with the follow-up. Why is all of this so important? Well, watch this. Now for Gideon, and like all of my other guides, we're certainly not fighting him. So do all of your buffs outside, run straight up to him, and spam charges to kill him in his speech. Uh, 
Okay, maybe that was just bad RNG. Let's try it again. Right. It's okay, no need to panic. We just need a little more damage. Let's see where we're at with the physic. Oh, we're at max damage. Oh god, no. I guess if we're gonna do this, we may as well do it properly. Head back to Carian Manor in Leonia. Run through all the way to Loretta. Loretta is really complicated fight, so the best strategy here is head to Rani's Rise and speak to her. Then down into the Night's Sacred Ground for the Finger Slayer Blade. Back to her. Then use the teleporter in Renner's Rise to get to Ainzel. Run all the way through Noxtella and the Lake of Rot all the way to Astor. Strats for this one? Simple. Bonk the head. So close yet so far. Now to deep root depths for fierce champs. No fancy one shot strats on this build unfortunately. You can double tap the first two though and do really good damage against the trio. Whenever I'm fighting these guys straight up I like to get rid of the slicer and axe dudes first then have a 1v1 with Lionel. Hop back to the Carian study hall in Leonia and up to the top for the curse mark of death. Get a hug and then it's in for Fortis Axe. And welcome to the one boss in this run that we're not going to be able to stagger due to his poise damage negation. Although Radan technically has the highest poise in the game, Fortis Axe's negation means that in practice, he's the hardest to stagger. It is possible, but to do it, even on this build, would require four shots to his head in quick succession, or nearly 10 to his body. In both cases, he'd be dead before we staggered him. I went with a simple R1 approach here, as charges can be interrupted by the lightning strikes. While we've got some runes to burn, head back to Rani's Rise and head east to drop down into this building to grab Fidia's Bell Bearing. Take it back to the round table and buy Karian Retaliation from the shop. Then head back to Stormvale to buy the Buckler from Gostop. Now head to Castle Sol for Commander Nile. Not the best weapon for the opening here as both summons require two hits but that's probably the biggest problem in the whole fight. Buff with Flame Grant Me Strength as he winds up, then roll into the electric foot attack and parry the follow up for a riposte and a chargey. This will trigger the big tornado. Dodge the initial attack and then get two charged R2s, a riposte and then another as he stands up. One more parry will end the fight. Grab the second half of the Halig Tree Medallion and head down through the snowfield to Ordener Town. Ride southwest from the Grace to the Mogwin Teleporter. Jump off this ledge to cheese the invader, then ride through Mogwin Palace to Moog. And you're probably thinking what I always think when I get to this fight. Can we kill him without the shackle, without the tear, before Knee Hill? And the answer on this build is absolutely yes. And I know this because this isn't the first time I've done this run. I filmed this exact build about a month ago, only to find out that I'd recorded it on all the wrong settings and had 10 hours of useless footage. But on that run, I stagger locked Moog to death with no shackle and no tear before Knee Hill on my second or third try. But after a good hour of solid attempts this time, I couldn't do it once. 
It just goes to show how RNG can be as perfect as it can be dreadful sometimes. If you're determined to do this, I'm pretty sure the secret was getting in a cheeky second chargey between the stagger and the riposte. But like I said, this wasn't an easy one to reproduce. With the shackle, it's really easy to do a perfect stun lock on him, so feel free to grab that if you want. If you want to do it without, you can see here that it's still relatively simple. Now head back to Ordener Town and into the Halo Tree. Once again, I'm using Ordener Skip. Jump on the pillar, line up your compass to the right of this notch, and do two jumps with the direction order being 12 o'clock, 7 o'clock. Head through the Halo Tree to Loretta. Now there's two options here. You can either play relatively passively and wait for those big blue swipes for charged attack opportunities, or play super aggressively and go for staggers. Either way, our damage is pretty good, so this shouldn't be too much of a problem. Head to the Halig Tree roots and pop Moog's Remembrance for one more level. Now for Melania. And while Cragblade is very good for staggering her, Chasing her around and waiting for opportunities to get heavy attacks in can be a little tedious. So I used my normal parrying strategy for her. All Gideon memes aside, this boss order is relatively sensible apart from Melania. So do feel free to leave her until later if you're not that comfortable with fighting her. As usual, three parries, take the riposte, follow up with the charged R2, and while you're in that animation, spam dodge backwards to get clear in case she waterfowls straight afterwards. I'm using light rolls for waterfowl as usual, three rolls backwards as she starts, and then three back to back rolls, one o'clock, one o'clock, six o'clock. If you're not confident in parrying Melania, check out my in-depth guide on it. Right. I guess it's time. Ah, I knew you'd come to stand before the Elden Ring, to become Elden Lord. What a sad state of affairs. So the most important strategy for this fight is to have a soft cushion or pillow to scream into between attempts. I'd also recommend taking a long walk between every five attempts so you don't get too burned out. The positives though, Gideon has a mechanic where if Moog and Melania are dead before you fight him, Melania's flower attack and Moog's flame toss will replace his Comet Azure and that godforsaken ring attack. While both of these new attacks deal devastating damage, I actually find them a little more manageable than the default ones. The key to Gideon is to stay on top of him. You can stun him out of most of his attacks with simple R1s. Just don't let him open up the distance, otherwise he'll start spamming. The one attack you have to make sure you avoid at all costs is this one-shotting explosion that will happen when he is close to death. I died to waterfowl hundreds of times in a row when I was learning Melania, but it never wound me up as much as dying to this attack once. Now for Godfrey, and there's a really nice strat here. Get a charge in at the start, and from here on in, just stick to R1s. You'll get a stagger, take the riposte, and then keep spamming R1s, as we don't want to stagger him again in phase one. Walk backwards at the start of the Horalu fight and hit him with a charged heavy. Take the riposte, and then for the slam attack, dodge the stomp with a rolling R1, and then the slam, then a charged attack. Everything in between is just our ones for a perfect hitless Godfrey Horaloo.
Now for Radabeast, and there isn't much to worry about here. Radagon is a complete pushover with this build. Get two heavies in at the start, which may involve tanking something depending on RNG, then a single R1 to stagger. Take the riposte into another heavy, then wait for the jump attack to finish the fight. It's always a little RNG, but you can play super scrappy here and still be fine. Now there is a perfect strat to the Elden Beast opening, but it does involve a cheeky extra heavy attack. Happily, it's way easier and more consistent than the earlier Moog one. Two charged R2s to start, one more for the stagger, then two more as you move around to the weak spot. Then spam R1 as you're in the animation for that cheeky riposte. Then one more chargey for half health right at the start of the fight. And if you're wondering if I have a strat for Elden Stars, you won't be disappointed. It's a little RNG again, depending on his last attack, but you can generally stagger him just after he casts it, and use the riposte to iframe the worst of it. And finally, for Plassey. And if you're thinking that I saved him until last because he's a major problem, not really. Three charged R2s will stun him, and there's a surprising number of attacks that allow you enough time for three. So just play patiently and take those opportunities. To maximize your damage, always go for a charged R2 on the head before you take the riposte. It looks a little tight, but you've almost always got the time. And that's it, how to not cheese Gideon and make yourself a super powerful strength build in the process. If you've made it this far and actually tried this build, please do let me know how you got on in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more Elden Ring build guides. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon.